Hi, this is Jill Sabella with Sabella Styles. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Today I'm going to show you how to make this envelope punch board tote. I found the tutorial from splitcoaststampers.com and today I'm going to show you how to do it. It's really fun. It's kind of got a different um, inside. It's almost like a bag in a box. Um, I also did, we're, today we're focusing on Halloween, but I did some other samples for different holidays. I did this one for Christmas. And just to show you too how you can use some of our punches, we're using the new cat punch we have, but you can use some of our other punches to kind of um, highlight the front. We also, um, I did this one that holds two um, nail polishes. And um, this particular one, I actually did the middle insert area on the outside. I'll show you how to do that. It was more like a tote. And then I did this one um, for a friend's 40th. And so that one, again, is more like a like a bag than a bag in a box. So you can see how they look a little different. But um, so these are the little samples of other particular ones I made. But today we're going to be working on the Halloween one. So let me set these aside and I will show you how I'm going to do that. Um, oh, also to highlight, I did, you can put a piece of candy in there or um, the nail polish or anything. These have those Giardelli chocolates, they fit right in there. I'll take it out and show you. I think there are four of them in there. So those fit right in there. And then um, this, I, you can even put a little gift card like in the back to kind of um, send to somebody maybe some little candy with it and a gift card. So a lot of things actually fit in this tiny bag. So let me get to showing you how we're gonna do this. Um, first, you're gonna need a piece of six by six uh, designer series paper. And um, I actually am using some of our retired Halloween paper because it didn't have the new paper. Here's our new paper, um, the Spooky Night Designer Series paper. Uh, it's really cute too, and its colors are uh, the pumpkin pie and white and black and Cajun craze. Um, these are particular, are black and, and um, vanilla is the color, so I'm going to be using that today. But this is really cute. Um, uh, set of paper and it comes in 12 by 12 and so you can order that. I'm also going to be showing, um, like I said, the cat punch, which is adorable and there's all different kinds of other ideas to um, make the cat look differently that you can search for. Um, also this new vintage, it's right here in the catalog, vintage crochet trim, which is really fun and you can tie knots with it. You can actually trim something with it on a card. It's going to be really cute. And then our um, black rhinestone jewels. So I'm going to be using those today, so let's get to it. Um, the paper, like I said, is a six by six piece of designer series paper, anything for any holiday. Um, you need a scrap of black to do the cat, a scrap of this particular, it's very vanilla or white, depending on your paper, um, for the sentiment. And you're going to need some a ribbon or, I mean, really you can do this how you want, but this is about five inches of each of these, the vanilla twine and the um, basic black vintage trim. So I'm going to be using those two. And um, let's get started. To make our box, we're going to be using our envelope punch board. Make sure that's in the camera. Okay, and then um, I find it best, the less busy the pattern is, easier to see when I am scoring and stuff like that. So put it on probably your least busy pattern. It really doesn't matter because you'll fold it the way you want, deciding on which side you want in the front. But you will start the left side of your paper on the one and three eighth inch mark. You will punch and score down your score line. It's right under here if you can't kind of can see it. So you'll punch and score down the score line. Then you will move it over to the four inch mark, which is marked by my washi tape. And you will again punch and score. Now, the rest of it, you will ignore your markings up here and you will just follow these score lines you have made. So you'll turn your paper 90 degrees to the left. You will line up this score guide right here with your first score mark. And I think you can, this is my score mark right here. So you can see that. I can see it probably better than you can, but you're going to line it up, line that score guide right up with your, with your score line, punch and score. Slide it over to that next score line you did, line it up, punch and score. Again, turn it 90 degrees. You'll do this on all four sides. You'll line up the score line you've made with your score guide, punch, score, find the next score line, there, punch, and score, and the last turn to the left, 90 degrees, and again line it up, punch and score, and last one, line it up, punch and score. 
Okay, so that, put away your little tool that fits nicely right here. And then um, I'm going to round the corners on the back side of this as a corner rounder, so that just helps finish it off. So we'll do all four sides. You kind of make sure that it's in there. Okay, so there is that we are done with our punch board. Kind of toss these little pieces. And then, so your piece, I mean, there's my piece, but this is what it looks like. This is, we're gonna end up doing some cutting too, but it'll look like this, a little easier to see with my white. All these score lines, and then these particular areas we're going to cut. So um, I will have a picture and, a, and the written tutorial on this at the end of my video as well. So if you did miss anything, um, the one and three inch inch start or the four inch start, um, you'll have that. But with that, we need to do some cutting. So um, you will notice that these ends are smaller than these. On the particular ends that are bigger, you're going to cut on this score line to the next intersecting score line. Can you see that? I'll do the next one too. So you'll cut on this score line exactly to the next intersecting. Then you'll turn it around to the opposite side, same side, same big side. Do the same exact thing. Cut on the score line to the next intersecting score line. Oops. And that's it. So that's your cut. Um, and then you can decide how you want your bag to face. I'm going to face the black and white out this time since I already made one of the other ones. It's going to be very black and white, I guess, and not colored, but that's cool. All right, so fold on all your score lines. And then I'll show you the different ways you can put it together. So my original way to put it together was um, the, um, the flaps were actually on the outside. So when you did the box, these little flaps were on the outside, which isn't un untraditional for how we do it, but it kind of makes, again, this cute little, um, kind of like a bag in a box look when you do the flaps on the outside. If you want to do it more streamlined and straight, like this particular box, you want to do the flaps on the inside and adhere them. And then again, this would come up and then it's more um, just like kind of like a box with a handle. Um, the other options too are having it, um, having your outside flaps show and give a little bit of contrast or really clean look, you can have them go on the inside and you never really see them. So um, those are all the options. Today I'm going to do the original and you need glue dots. They're gonna be working well for you today and make it actually pretty quick for you to do it. Now, if you do decide to do your flaps on the inside, you can just put adhesive on it because they'll need to kind of be stuck all over it. Um, and you can put adhesive all over there. With me, I'm doing them on the outside, so I really just need single glue dots so that it gives this part in the middle a chance to move and not be stuck to the sides. And you'll see what I mean when I do that. So, um, so on the inside, you will put the glue dot. Oops, sorry. I'm gonna put one on each inside corner. So I'm putting the glue dot about right there on this these particular corners. And the last one, okay. And then what you'll just do is bring it up and kind of meet it flush Oops. with the bottom. And you'll do that on the other side. Oh my gosh, I think I lost a glue dot. Oh, it got stuck to my finger, fun. Okay, <laughs> then um, do the other side. Okay, and then just from the inside kind of press it down, make sure you've got the um, glue dots stuck there. And then, I, like I said before, I, um, oh my gosh, I totally messed up and forgot to show you guys the inside. Nice. So before you put the box together, you're going to want to use your um, three quarter inch circle punch, line it up centered on each side. It's easier to do when you don't have the box together, um, but I'm going to actually be able to get it done. And you'll do the three quarter inch circle punch to punch out that handle. Um, if the box isn't all together, it just makes it a little flatter to be able to slide your punch up to the particular spot you want. But um, so yeah, the three quarter inch circle is what you use for that. So sorry. Um, okay, anyway, again, you can make your box very streamlined and, and do the inside. Um, and again, it will make it more like a standing up box or my particular box is going to have these flaps on the outside. It will allow this to pinch in and give a little cute contrast to the um, to the box color. So with that, you'll just put a glue dot right on the top there on the uh, inside of that flap. And another one, I'm losing glue dots today. Okay, and then just push that down. So you've got your bag all put together. It's really very simple, actually very quick to make these. Um, and then you'll use your ribbon. Um, this particular one, I just, I tied a bow on the top. 
Uh, this one, I made it more of a um, tag topper and tied some twine around it. Um, but in our case, I'm going to um, just tie a little knot. Kind of wanted it to be kind of messy and um, not really, not really um, too perfect. It's Halloween. It's kind of creepy and spooky and, you know, things don't always look streamlined like that. So just tying, um, tying it up and then doing a knot for that. Okay, so it's kind of, there we go. Okay, so there's that. And then um, we will just, easy as could be, take the scrap of black and punch out a cat. Black cat, so cute. And then um, I'm also going to do the sentiment. I'm using Teeny Tiny Wishes. Um, I use this stamp set a lot for these little treats because they're perfect sizes. And I'm going to use the Happy Halloween one, but you could do sweet treats or depending on what you're going to put in it. So um, I'll be using that. And then I'm going to use the um, Tangerine Tango ink for that um, cause it, just because it matches my particular DSP. Stamp that down. And then we're going to use the, um, this is the classic label punch. I'm going to punch that out, just center it in there. Punch it out. And we're going to add these two little rhinestones to it. Um, I think these are like the middle size. Well, no, they're the small. They're the small size on the particular sheet of rhinestones. But I find it easy to pick it up with one of my, um, my paper, paper piercing tools. Um, it just helps get it off of the paper and stuck. So there's that. And then it's just a matter of putting that together. I need to find some dimensionals. Here they are. And I popped up the cat onto the box. Let me get that done. And so I just put one dimensional, was really all I needed, um, kind of towards the bottom of that cat, and sat him right there. He's a lot of black on there. And then I used just regular or Tombow adhesive, kind of uh, on one side to the center, just to tape it to the cat and, and center it there, but it will kind of pop up with him, along with him. So there's your little cute envelope punch board tote. And I really hope you enjoyed my video. Let me get out some of the other samples again to remind you what they look like and what other options you have. And, um, and this, oh, the bow came undone. Anyway, you get the idea. <laughs> hope you enjoyed it and stop by my website if you would like to order any of these products. It is sabellastyles.stampinup.net and you can click shop now to order anything you need. Thank you.